coin. I place it into my hand, close it into a fist. Watch, I squeeze. The coin begins to look invisible. It only lasts a moment if I take nothing, squeeze it up. The coin comes back into reality. Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today you're in for a treat because I'm going to be teaching you that coin vanish that you've all been asking about from the ink and sleight of hand edit that was posted a couple of days ago. But before I teach it to you, please do me a favor, go and hit that subscribe button and drop me a like so I can at least know that you're watching and that you're enjoying the content. And for anyone feeling adventurous, drop a comment below. And if you want to get a bit cheeky, you can even ask me to teach something in particular and I might just do it in the next video. All right, let's jump into the crossbow vanish. So as always, we stand on the shoulders of giants and credit where credit's due. Those of you that are familiar with coin work will recognize the thread running through this slight as the himba vanish, uh, because this is essentially, this essentially is the himba vanish, but we're changing the timing of when the move occurs or when moves occur. Uh, so of course the Himber Vanish is uh, a coin vanish by Richard Himber, published in The Man and His Magic in 1980. And this is how, I probably won't do this justice, but the Himber Vanish typically looks like this. It's placed into the fist and it vanishes. So those of you that are aware of it, you know that the reality is that as you go to drop the coin into your hand, your pinky stretches out catches the coin and steals it into the fingers. So it's speed, it looks like this. Now, what we've done is sort of extrapolate this and change the timing of the sequence to allow us to uh, make this hopefully feel more organic and fair. And, it, and, it, and the, the theory behind this is that it should feel like this hand is, is, is less of a part of the process as the, as the Himba Vanish. So again, the Himba Vanish classically looks like that, and it goes. Um, so I'll, I'll show you what's going on and the theory behind it. The first thing we need to do is bring your left, your right hand into play. So to do, to do this, as with the classic, we're going to drop the coin into the hand. Now, the, the reason we place it from a drop position, as with the original, is to give us reason to keep our hand here. You'll find if you actually do this, a lot of you will keep your hand, your right hand, naturally in this area, in this zone. So you start off by dropping it into the fingers. You don't want to begin with the coin in your left hand and then bring your right hand in because that's not going to make sense. You also don't want to do this. You don't want to place it like that. You want to do it in the. In, you want to hold the coin where it would naturally be if your hand was in this position, resting against your tummy, almost by your belly button. And then you're gonna allow it to just roll, you pinch it between your thumb and your index finger, you're gonna allow it to roll off and land into the hand. Now, in the classic Himba Vanish, your pinky is outstretched before, and the coin is gonna land and fall on it, right? And it, you're gonna aim for the palm of your hand. This is where this differs. So, what you're gonna do is aim to drop the coin in your fingers as if it's gonna land in a finger palm, okay? So it's going to land on your fingers and as you do that your hand's going to come out of the way because that's what you would naturally do you would drop the coin and come out of the way but you're not going to bring it all the way back if you see from the side you're not going to bring it all the way back to your tummy you're just going to bring it back slightly because you in a moment you're going to execute the steal so the coin is dropped and if you notice the position of my hands uh, i'm i'm trying to keep them in line parallel with the audience. I'm not trying to do it side to side, like here, okay? It's almost like I'm loading a shotgun, right? So this goes into the hand, and it's gonna land on the fingers, as if it's, in, as if it's gonna go into a finger palm. Now at this point, it's gonna look like your hand closes, and it's gone. The, re uh, and the reality is, is that it's gonna be, as it comes closed, if I was to keep these fingers open, I'm going to steal it as I'm closing the fist. So it's not happening here, if that's an exposed view. It's dropping, and then as the fist closes, then the steal's occurring. And it's all with the pinky. 
So, hands in line, drop from the right hand into the left fingers or vice versa if you're left handed. And now you're gonna close your fist. And the reason we drop the coin into your fingers is because in a moment you're gonna stick your pinky out. And as you close the fist, the coin is gonna go on top of the pinky naturally. And that's why if it lands here and you try to steal, it's much more difficult. You can slide under, but by dropping on the fingers, as the, as the, as the fingers curl, it naturally goes on top of your pinky finger. So, here, the hand begins to curl. Now, exposed view, as my fingers get to this position where you're essentially covered, as, and those of you that know like the Ramsey subtlety, you, you'll sort of know your angles, but you want to point sort of the lowermost knuckles of your fingers towards the eyes of the audience, and you're kind of doing it with this index knuckle more than anything. You're also going to bring your thumb into play to cover too. You don't want that open. You want this to make cover. As that happens, that's when the pinky's going to come out and rest under the coin. And you kind of want to get a balance here. You want to be able to feel the point where you're balancing that coin. Okay? Because if it's not, it's going to fall off. So here. And what I like to do now is, is this extra uh, subtlety, which you can't do with a regular Himba Vanish, which is to just let that coin show a bit more in the hand, right? Now as I come up, my fingers are almost brushing this hand, so my pinky is almost brushing this hand. That's how close I am. But in a moment, it's going to feel like it's not that close, and I'll show you why. Come here, I can display, which you can't do with the original, right? I can display openly. And as I come up, that pinky is now st sticking out. It's balancing the coin. And under, as the fingers curl back around, it's almost like they're pushing this pinky back at the same time. As the fingers curl it all the way in, the pinky is going to steal that coin in. So open view is the coin lands here. It's flipped onto the hand and these fingers are open now and it's going to come back, right? But the cover of this hides it. So the cover of these fingers, like that, hides the coin. So it's there, not there, there not there. So it goes in, curl around, steal. Now, as I'm at this point, I've got the coin gripped. And if you know uh, moves like the Spider Vanish, and you've seen like uh, Homer Lee Wag's, uh, I think it's called Trifector or Triad, uh, download on Theory 11, you can learn how to make a really com a very convincing hand position to hide the palm coin. Um, but for all intents and purposes at the moment, the coin is going into clip and I'm keeping it in clip here like that now as I start to squeeze and start to move my fingers as if I'm balling this coin up into invisibility I'm gonna slowly and you'll see from the side I'm gonna slowly move my hands further away because as I open them at the end it's gonna seem like this hand wasn't in play at all and you can do this as slow as you like because it's gonna be more deceptive the slower it is and the, and the less they can realize that you're slowly moving your hands apart. So, coin comes in, fingers curl, you're gonna steal that coin. Try and keep these fingers as still as possible. It's difficult, uh, I'm no pro at it. But you're gonna try and keep the fingers as still as possible. And then, as the focus comes to the hand, you can show that it's now empty. And if you look, it's sort of, uh, you know, from here you couldn't have done it. But the side view is this. I'm trying to keep all that in focus, but again, here, don't want to do that steal too early, and then move away as it vanishes. Now, you can do a bunch of different things to bring the coin back. Um, you can simply go to, you can relax the hand and drop to the pocket. I don't, I don't recommend relaxing the hand um, at this point, because it feels like it was there for no reason for too long. But if you can get it right, uh, and get to the point where you're about to vanish it, you can see actually I'll do this one-handed and move away and, and bring attention to the fact that you're dropping your hand. Uh, or like you've seen in the video, um, from this clip that it's in, once the hand opens, it starts to close naturally, you can come over and drop the coin 
So as you come forward, it's, it's, it's going to feel like it's gone and I'm going to reach and grab a piece of air. Uh, but what I'm secretly doing is, uh, once it's in clip, these are closed, I'm going to come right close, unload the coin into finger palm again, but from this angle you can't see it right here. Grab something or, you know, pretend, uh, mimic mime grabbing something, bring my hand back. And what I'm going to do is close my fingers and place the coin into my fingertips. I always look to find the light to shine it into so you get this big bright reveal. Okay, so let's go again from the top, come here, from the top, come here, steal the coin, move away, watch as it goes. One last time, try not to clink your ring and then shine it into the light. And that's it. That's it, I hope you all enjoyed the tutorial. If you want to say like a sort of a thank you back, then all you need to do is hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. And also drop me a little thumbs up while you're at it. And if you're feeling adventurous, go ahead and leave a comment below. You can actually make requests for what you want to see in terms of tutorials. And uh, I will pick a few out and film them over the next couple of days. So thank you everyone for tuning in. Oh, and if you haven't done so already, Go and search uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts for The Magic Podcast with myself and Craig Petty. The next episode, episode two, comes out on Wednesday, 9 p.m. London time. So that's it. Hope you all enjoyed and I can't wait to see you all very soon in the next video.